Hello everybody, at Meal245 here and welcome back to another amazing video. Today we are beginning a brand new series that I guarantee each and every one of you will absolutely adore. My unique and original Minecraft Hardcore Mode series. It isn't your ordinary let's play, it's so much more than that, so let me explain. In a nutshell, there are two things that make this series different from your average let's play. First, it's post commentary, meaning that the footage and narration are recorded separately, meaning that while editing, I narrate over the footage to improve the quality and cinematography of the content, in addition to helping you enjoy it more. This means that the commentary is more like that of a 100 days video than that of, well, a let's play. Second, in each video, I'll have a set of one or more goals. These goals will be established at the beginning of each video and will vary depending on the episode. Furthermore, I can't finish recording the episode until I either accomplish all of the goals or die trying. Today, I only have one goal, beat the Ender Dragon. So with that out of the way, let's get right into today's video. Wait! Actually, before we get into today's video, I'd like you to do me a favor. Just do something easy that won't cause you too much effort or distress. This favor is, can you subscribe to my YouTube channel and like the video if you've not already? Just real quick. And if you don't already know, you can do this just by scrolling down to below, below where the video is playing with, with the thumbs up symbol next to the thumbs down one and the bright red button with the word subscribe on it. Also, please join my Discord, which is linked down below in the description down below, and stream a wonderful channel with all your friends and family. Now let's actually get into the content. To start things off today, I'd like to show a quick montage of the, of, I made in the first few days of this new world.
Basically, in the beginning, I found a village, got enough food and iron to start myself out there, left to go explore, then came back quickly when I realized that I had neither a bed nor the materials to make one on me. After getting half my health taken away by one hit from a zombie who somehow miraculously didn't kill either of the villagers next to him, I killed this aforementioned zombie and then set off on an adventure into unknown terrain. Fast forward 10 minutes, I have a decent amount of stone, iron, and coal, and one, and I realized once again that I have no bed and the sunset is upon me. And this time it would be impractical to go back to the village, so I hoped to myself that I could find some sheep to kill before, the, before I get killed myself. When I, when I, whether I was lucky or unlucky, I end up finding some sheep once the sun is fully set before getting killed. Running from mobs, it was probably midnight when I finally got myself to sleep. After I went to sleep again, I destroyed my bed and continued on my journey. It wasn't long before I came across a cave that led to, to a huge cave system. I found a monster spawner pretty early on, and even though I didn't show it, I found several patches of sweet, sweet diamonds in that cave system. It was then that I returned to the desert temple that I had found earlier and began to, and began to transform it. What you are watching right now is a montage of me transforming the desert temple. I promise you the next episode will have fully cinematic time lapses, but I didn't have the replay mod active while I was recording this footage, so unfortunately no time lapse. I did, however, install it once it, when I finished recording this episode and started on the next one. And yes, you heard me right, I'm working on episode 2 right now, and mark my words, you do not want to miss it. It is quite something, and I'm not going to give any spoilers, but it's good. Anyway, and just the, and the, enjoy the rest of the montage, I guess. Directly after I did what this montage has to show, which is just over half the work put into the entire starter base, I finished it by now, I decided to go strip mining with the knowledge of a few tricks I know to help me find diamonds. I dug down at the right location within a clay patch that would almost always give me, well, diamonds, and surprise, surprise, I found diamonds. Crazy, right? It was then I decided to go, to go strip mine. It wasn't long before I found tough. What's so special about tough, you may ask? As it happens, you can find diamonds using this aforementioned tough. By digging from a very specific spot in the touch tough patch for a certain number of blocks, specifically five blocks north from the northeast corner of the top layer, then either dig up or down, you'll almost always find diamonds, and indeed I did. Another eight vein, in fact. Eventually, I decided to turn this strip mine into a dive mine, then one that was only one block high. I found several more patches of tough and then diamonds, and even once stumbled upon a vein of diamonds straight up, no tough or anything. 
came out of the trip with 35 diamonds gathered in only about 15 minutes. In summary, it was sure a very fruitful expedition that made me a little mm, richer. After crafting some basic diamond gear, I decided to use some obsidian I'd gotten earlier to create a portal to another dimension, the Nether. I put in a pair of golden leggings that I'd found earlier in the depth of the portal. I spawned in a crimson forest, not on the ground, but on the top of the cover of crimson trees. The first thing I saw, other than the, that what biome I was in, is a very large wooden portal next to me that didn't have anything particularly valuable in its chest. I was also right next to an expanse of lava ocean and, on the other side of that ocean, a bastion rendered in. In front of me and over a bit of a hill was a soul sand valley. I made a snap decision in that moment to go to that soul sand valley, hoping that fortress and knowing that it was unlikely for me to find one that easily. I made, way up, I made my way up over the hill and what I saw just a few blocks in front of me was shocking. Sitting right there was a fortress. The gods of Minecraft would bless me. A miracle had just happened. Despite my prior luck with flying diamonds, my luck had not ran out and I had just found the one thing I desired most, a nether fortress. My nether was that of a godsend and could not have been better. As you could imagine, I was ecstatic. On the pathway to the fortress had a sol sol solitary wither skeleton, a guard of swords to the establishment. As I expected, as soon as I got close to him, he pulled out his stone sword and came at me. When he hit me for the first time, he attacked in two and a half hearts of just initial damage and another one from the wither effect. He had just wiped out over a third of my health in one shot, and I could not fight for fear of being killed, so I did the only logical thing in that situation, and I ran. Before long, I was back in the overworld after finding both a bastion and a fortress close to nether spawn. My decision in the world would help me to be able to defend myself better. I needed protection and on my armor. Back in the overworld, I returned to the village that I had found in the beginning with a lectern in hand. The first thing I did when I returned was to mine flint until I had enough for a fletching table. All, when I had all the flint I needed, I crafted a fletching table, found a villager without a job, and placed the fletching table next to him, converting him to a fletcher villager, complete with the ability to trade half a stack of six for one emerald. When you do the math, only four stacks of log and get you an entire stack of emeralds, so I immediately got to work chopping wood to trade. After more than a few but not too many minutes, I had a stack of emeralds and all the materials I needed to do some villager trade recycling. Another unemployed villager was then walking around near the well of the village. I took him away to place down my lectern in the inventory and convert the then employed villager into a librarian. I don't re remember exactly what the villager traded first as I'm writing this script without watching back the footage, but I know that it wasn't the book I wanted protection for. After a copious amount of breaking and replacing the lectern, reshuffling the villagers' trades, I stumbled upon a Protection 3 trade and decided to recycle the trades anyway because I knew it wasn't max level. I also later and intentionally my dad reshuffled, reshuffled the mending book. Eventually, after being sick and tired of reshuffling the trades so much, I finally settled on Protection 3 for only 13 emeralds. After getting the emeralds I needed, I bought four of the books and applied them to my armor. Now my armor is enchanted with protection 3. After finishing enchanting my armor, I decided that it would be a good idea and a good time for me to return to the nether. After waking my way back to the desert temple server base, I stepped into my personal level portal and into the dimension on the other side, not planning to return until I had enough blaze rods to keep the game. After quickly finding a blaze spawner, I started to the blazes. At first, my luck was getting that I got the first blaze rods relf but then it plummeted and I began getting rods at a much slower rate. After a bit of near death experience at one point, I safely left the nether with all of the rods I needed. After leaving the nether, I decided to try to get in game insomnia by not sleeping so that I could summon phantoms. This meant that I needed to stay up for three consecutive in game nights and then a fourth to summon these aforementioned like phantoms. The reason I wanted to do this was to, so I could create a full, slow falling potion for the dragon fight, which negated all fall damage. And the day before the first night, I took the liberty to level up Carol, Cleric and get it to trade me Ender Pearls, another ingredient I would need for beating the game, and also a useful tool that allowed me to literally teleport. Here's a montage of the, of, of the antics that I got up in the first three nights in their consecutive days.
It was on the day following my third night without sleep and I remembered that there was one ingredient that I needed but did not have, nether wart. They're the only rare ingredient in slow falling potion other than phantom membranes of course and I needed them quickly. I found my way back to my personal leather portal and to the nether fortress and began to look around. After a fair amount of looking and in the expansive nether fortress close to my spawn, I started to get worried for two reasons. First, I didn't want to miss the phantoms. I would get the opportunity to fight them again the following night, but I wanted to save as much time as possible. Second, in my long-term survival world, the only nether forges even remotely close to spawn had a distinct lack of any nether wart room, and I really didn't want the same to be true for my new hardcore world. Luckily, I did eventually find some, but to my dismay, when I got back to the overworld, the night was long over. The next few in-game days were spent preparing for the dragon fight and hopefully winning. From the, night spending, from the night spent preparing for Insomnia, I had obtained several more Ender Pearls, in addition to plenty of mo both pearls and arrows from villagers during the days. Before long, the sun set in the world for the last time before one of its great powers, and then me or the Ender Dragon would be dead. Soon, I heard the piercing shrieks of a group of four phantoms. Taking refuge in water, I learned that the hard way that the blue flow did not even slow the wretched birds down in the slightest. It was, it was never too low on health, but I was constantly worried about the health of my helmet, which is below 100 durability and did not have mending on it, because the onslaught of the phantoms did not stop and they attacked frequently despite being infuriatingly hard to hit. Eventually, after dozens of failed hits and, helmets, and helmet durability lost, I finally killed the fourth phantom, and it was the only one to drop a membrane of the group. Then right there, underwater, I pulled up the brewing stand and began brewing some potions of slow falling. When I had three potions, I began using Eyes of Ender to triangulate the location of the stronghold. It took me on a wild adventure, taking me to run the coordinates of 1700-300 until finally I threw an eye and it traveled down into the ground. Following it, me being in a swamp right near a witch hut, I dug down less than 10 blocks before hitting stone bricks. I had mined into the stronghold. Luckily for me, the end portal was right nearby and it did not take long at, not take long at all for me to find it. A solitary eye was in the frame, and I promptly inputted the remaining 11 eyes into the other 11 frames. A, so a sound rang out throughout the world as the entire portal opened to another dimension. I jumped through. As I entered the realm, I, hear I heard the fearsome growl of the ferocious beast that was the Ender Dragoon. I equipped myself with a carved pumpkin in my helmet slot, my resource back makes the overlay invisible, and drank a potion of slow falling to prepare for the fight. Unfortunately, my obsidian platform was not in the end island, but then again, it also wasn't too far away, but anyway, I took the liberty to bridge over a few blocks so I could reach the main island. When I was at a reasonable range, I bowed down to easily hit the end crystal that would heal the dragon. destroy those that were either within cages of iron bars or too high for me to reach. Also, watch this cool trick of mine for easily destroying ink crystals in cages. Just tower up and into the corner until you can't anymore, then punch the crystal out and it will take ne no next to no damage and that crystal will be more. For, for one especially tall tower, I will tower it up to it and build the bridge away. And hit it easily with my bow. I then used this opportunity to bow down the rest of the unusually tall crystal, and before I knew it, all the towers were down. The dragon pump was first, and I think about to put her health just then. I could have done much more damage by taking her head. When she inevitably lifted back up into the air, I began shooting her and even hit her several times, earning myself a take aim advancement. Eventually, she hurt again, and once she, and 
once is she again lifted into the air, and the fraction of her health was left, for I'd done massive damage. One perch later, she was dead. I gained many levels in the XP she had dropped, and I had achieved the solitary goal for my video, and had also obtained the holy dragon egg. I guess you could say I beat her so hard I was dragon on her face. Jokes aside, thank you for watching today's video. It took lots of work to create, and it was definitely different than my previous content. Please comment down below what you thought of this video for I could plan to continue the series alternating these videos in my previous style of scripted video essays. Also, while you are down there, please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. In addition to clicking the notification bell right next to the subscribe button, you can keep yourself notified. Join my Discord, which is linked down in the description down below, and share a wonderful channel with all of your friends and family. And with that out of the way, have an amazing day, and I hope to see you in my future content. Goodbye!